Hello everybody. In this video, we are using the correction data from the base station we have set up in the previous video to correct the position of a rover to within centimeter accuracy using the same free software that is provided by the manufacturer of the GNS module, which we used for streaming the correction data. So if you have not watched the previous video, I suggest you click the link above before coming back to this video here. So different from the first video where we used the UM980 module, in this video, we will use the 982 module because it is the dual antenna version. And at least in principle, it will allow us to also determine the orientation of our rover using both of those antennas here. But any of the other modules will also work here. So you can see the rover station modules are the UM960, 980, and the 982. Actually, I'm not quite sure what module that one here is. In any case, we have to configure our module as a rover now using commands provided in this reference uh, command manual. Again, a link to the manual will be in the description. Okay, so let's configure our UM982 module. And for that, we first have to connect our module and open uPrecise right here. And then in my case, this is connected to COM port 4. And we can say connect and hopefully we will see our module here being connected. And also, eventually you will start the light to blink on your module indicating that you have good uh, satellite connection. Okay, and then we can take a look here at the command reference manual, and we can see here we have to set the mode to a rover mode. And also, I like to go into the configuration here and actually configure the signal group. So, as always, it is a good idea to first do a factory reset in case you have any funny settings in here. F reset will always get you back to factory defaults and make sure you get the command acknowledged here with an OK. So the first command I like to set is the signal group because the signal group command will reset your device. So any changes you have made before executing the signal group command and you have not saved your configurations will be lost. So let's go right here. And you can see here are the various signal groups you can select. And for the two antenna UM982 module, those are the valid combinations. And I will use the 3-6 combination because as you can see here, the signal group number three gives me the largest possible satellite constellation. I can't select two because it is not an option for the uh, to dual antenna module. So that's the, the best we can do. And I don't really care on the other antenna because right now I'm only interested in a single antenna rover. So if we then execute this command here, config single group 3.6, you should see that after a little while, your module will reboot, meaning that it starts collecting satellite data and kind of go through its reset cycle. And once this has completed, you can then continue with configuring the module. And in this case, this is pretty straightforward because I'm simply setting it to the rover station mode here. And I actually want to set it into the survey mode, which is the default mode. So all we have to do is say mode rover. Of course, you also could say road, uh, mode rover survey if you wanted to. But since it is the default, this is not necessary. So giving this command, he should then again acknowledge this. Then we can just check that everything looks good. We can type, well, first let's clear the screen here and just type mode. You can see here the mode we are in now. We are in robo mode. And also, if you clear again and type config, then you here can see all the various configurations. And again, it's a good idea to actually read over those because you may find some settings you may have to change for your particular circumstances. But if you scroll down or scroll up in this case, somewhere here you will see your signal group command. And indeed, it is now set to signal group three and six. Another setting I like to change is the RTK timeout. If you scroll right here, you see RTK timeout is set to 600 seconds right now. This means that the system only will uh, indicate that it's lost RTK correction after 600 seconds, which I just find way too long. So I will change the setting here as well. You we can simply copy this one here. And let's make this a 10. So after 10 seconds of no longer receiving correction data, the model will indicate that it has lost the data stream. 
So again, we can send this and we should get in. Okay. And with that, we can then save, save config to permanently save those settings to the non-volatile memory. So if we unplug our module and plug it back in, it will go back to those settings. All right, great. So now that it is configured, we can start sending our NEMA sentences. So we actually get the location of our rover device. And again, the commands here are the GGA command, which we want to receive every second, which gives us the time and location of our module. Again, there's this little bug in the software, so we have to ignore this, unfortunately, for right now. And we also can use the GSV command every second, which gives us the satellite configurations and the signal strength of the various satellites. So if we start sending that every second, you will now see your configuration here. And then this does maybe I should save config one more time to save also the data stream here. So now we can use the trajectory tool to actually see the precision of our rover. So if I zoom in here, you can see that the position is drifting because we don't have RTK correction yet enabled. And over time, this will drift quite significantly here. So maybe let's just let this run for a little while and see how it develops. All right, so now you can see we have drifted here by almost one meter. But if you take a look at the correction data on our base station, you see that we have not consumed any correction data yet. We only have sent correction data. So in order to receive the correction data, we need to configure our module here. So we have to go to this little briefcase, RTCM, and then we need to connect to the NTRIP client here and everybody in the world can access the correction data on RT to go. The password here actually is none and you just have to provide the, the mount point name and the IP of RTK to go. I don't think you can give the URL in this particular software here. You have to use the IP address and of course port is 2101. So if it's just the NTRIP client and then the output, you need to set to the same serial port where you connect your module to, which in my case again is four, and then we can start to connect. And hopefully your input and output here will remain green. You also may want to change to hex format since the binary data, which the RTCM is illegible otherwise. All right, that was great. And then you should, after not too long, see that your RTK correction light has turned on. And also if you then go back to the monitor here, you, you see now, that your location has been fixed right here. So if we recenter on here and zoom in, you can see that now we have, have locked our location with, within a centimeter, which again, to me, is uh, quite incredible. And also, if you go to the RTK to go website and refresh here, you should now see that we are actually consuming the correction data here. All right, so that's how far we can take it with Uprecise, since the software back right now does not allow us to see our location on a map. But there's another free software you can use, and this is QGIS, which is a really fantastic open source project, which we can use to put our rover on a map. But before we do that, let me just show you one more thing here. And this is essentially the drift without correction data. And you can see here the scale is one meter. So we're drifting by around two and a half meters or so. But then as soon as we turn on the RTK correction, you can see that the spot here gets locked down and you really have to zoom in to the highest zoom level to see the drift of the data with RTK. Okay, then let's have a look at RTK correction using QGIS, a free geographic information open source software package, which really is, is really good, and the link will be in the description. However, this video will not be about QGIS, so I will not go into any detail here. If you're interested, you can leave a comment in the description, and maybe I will make a video about it. You also can head over to my QGIS playlist, which currently has only a single video, but who knows, maybe by the time you come over there, I already have made another one. In any case, here is 
the data right now on a map. And if you zoom in here, you can see there is quite a mess. And if you use the measurement tool here, you can see that we have about a drift of 1.4 meters or so. However, if I zoom in here, because I actually have RTK enabled, you can see that the position has been locked down here. And let's change those to millimeters and measure across here. And you can see I have about 15 millimeters or 1.5 centimeters in terms of accuracy. However, in order to accomplish that, you actually will have to connect an ESP microcontroller. And that will be the topic of my next video. So again, if you're interested in that, I suggest you subscribe so you don't miss the video. And for sure, give it a like. Thank you and goodbye.